Hey everyone, Amin here with AI Plays. Today we are covering color space conversion. Let's get started. To recap, so far we have covered how a camera converts light into a Bayer domain image, how to correct dead pixels, how to compensate for black levels, how to adjust for lens shading, what an anti-aliasing filter is and how to apply one, how to apply auto white balance gain control, how to convert the Bayer domain image into a full RGB image, and finally, how to adjust the lightness scale to make a more visible image. First off, I'd like to clarify an error on my part. So far, we have been working with the uint data type. That stands for unsigned integer. In previous videos, I have said that values in the 8-bit uint data type, also known as uint8, can have values ranging from negative 255 to positive 255. This was a mistake on my part. Really, they can only have values from 0 to 255 for a total of 256 unique numbers. That's 2 to the power 8. These are unsigned integers, meaning no negative sign. I'll say that again. The uint data type has no negative numbers, ever. On the other hand, regular integers with the data type int can have negative numbers. The 8-bit version, int8, has values ranging from negative 128 to positive 127, still having a total of 256 unique values. There is no data type that ranges from negative 255 to positive 255. If you want to access both values in a single data type, you would have to convert to a higher order int based data type like int 16, which would now have 65,536 total values, half negative and half positive. That is, by the way, 2 to the power 16. Now with that covered, let's start on color space conversion. To address color space conversion, we should start by talking about what color spaces are. A color space is a specific way of organizing and representing colors in a way that helps us manage and represent them in different contexts. Put another way, color spaces help us describe and quantify colors in a standardized numerical manner. To qualify to be considered a color space, there are certain conditions that need to be met. First off, the color space needs a defined color system that will allow colors to be represented numerically. Second, the color space needs to ensure perceptual uniformity. What that means is an equal numerical change in the color system results in an equal change in color intensity. Third, you must be able to convert between different color spaces. And finally, the color space must cover an entire color gamut. An image of an example color gamut is shown on screen, and it refers to the range of colors which a particular device can produce or record. There are some other minor requirements, like the color space being easy to use and being independent of device, but these are the main ones. Now, let's use the RGB color space as an example since it's what we're most familiar with. This is the RGB cube, and it represents all possible colors covered by the RGB color space on a three-dimensional axis. R, G, and B are each represented by a number from 0 to 255, and this number determines the intensity of red, green, and blue color in the final pixel. That covers the numerical condition. Next, when you increase the red channel by 25, the pixel gets roughly 10% more red every time. It's not like going from 0 to 25 adds 10% more red, but then 25 to 50 adds 30% red. Put another way, the increase in intensity is directly proportional to the increase in numerical value every time, so the second condition of perceptual uniformity is also met. We haven't covered other color spaces, but we'll get there. For now, just take my word for it that the third condition, conversion between color spaces, is also met. Finally, this cube also shows off the entire color gamut. Red, green, and blue are at the bottom left, bottom right, and top edges. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are at the top right, top left, and bottom edges. White is the face edge, and black is the hidden edge. Combinations of all of these colors are shown in the rest of the cube, with 254 shades of gray along the main diagonal. With that, you can probably guess what color space conversion does. It takes the image, which is currently in the RGB color space, and converts it into a different color space. But which color space, and why bother converting? The color space that we are converting into is called YCBCR. This color space has three channels, Y meaning luminance, CB meaning chrominance blue, and CR meaning chrominance red. The luminance channel is just a grayscale version of the image. It's formed using this formula, where R, G, and B are the red, green, and blue channels respectively. It takes into account the human eye's natural sensitivity to different colors of light to produce an actual grayscale image with proper lighting and figure. 
instead of the checkerboard selective image that was formed as a bare domain image. Chromeness blue is calculated using this formula, where Y is the luminance channel that we just calculated, and B is the blue channel from the RGB image. It serves as a measure of how blue a given pixel in the image is, relative to the human eye's perception of the output color. Similarly, chromeness red, calculated by this very similar formula, does the same thing but for the red color. Here is an example of converting an RGB color wheel to YCBCR. You can see that the Y channel is brightest in the area outlined in blue, which is just what we'd expect since that's where white is in the color wheel. Meanwhile, the CB channel is brightest at the originally blue area and gets progressively dimmer everywhere else, just like the CR channel with the originally red area. Okay, so why bother converting to YCBCR? The YCBCR color space is the standard color space used to store and transmit both video and static images by convention. Initially, this just started off as being done for convenience though. When color televisions were first released to the general public, it took time to spread them out, and most people still had black and white TVs for a very long time. Sending a black and white TV RGB signals, and then expecting the TV to convert it to YCBCR on the spot was just not practical. By converting to YCBCR beforehand, black and white TVs could still receive signals fast since they were only taking in the Y channel. Meanwhile, color TVs could still choose to receive all three. As technology and techniques progressed, YCBCR has remained the standard due to its applications in compression and compatibility. We will discuss this in a lot more detail in the final video of the series where we recreate basic JPEG image compression. But the gist of the idea is that the human eye is more sensitive to changes in brightness intensity than in color changes. So by splitting up the image into brightness intensities and color information, there's a lot of extra information that can be dropped to compress images. Now let's have a look at the code. We start by defining the CSC function, which takes as input the uint8 RGB gamma correction image we created in the last video. Our outputs will be the luminance channel Y and an array holding both the CB and CR channels. This is more of a personal style choice. You could just as easily have chosen to separate all three channels or put them all together. It doesn't make a difference. The motivation behind it is that we will later apply different filters and transformations to luminance and chrominance, so I chose to split them this way. The actual code is really very simple. You extract the R, G, and B channels from the RGB image, and then you apply the formulas. Just like in gamma correction, since adding, subtracting, or multiplying arrays of the same size from each other results in element-wise operations in NumPy, the code becomes very simple. Finally, we use np.dstack to stack the images across a third dimension, and then return the image. To visualize the output, I'm using subplots in matplotlib. Unfortunately, since matplotlib does not display images in the YCBCR domain, we have to see each channel individually as a grayscale image. Matplotlib only supports RGB. If we need to see the full color image, we can just apply all of the formulas in reverse and regenerate the RGB image. Regardless, here are the three channels for Y, CB, and CR. That's it for today. Next time, we'll cover noise filter for chroma. Have a good day, everyone.